32. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 32 <laughs> of Martian Gothic Unification. I asked you before, and you never answered me. I know. We're just going to leave this part in, though. So uh, It's Professor Nate, along with Professor Devin and Professor Rod, um, once again playing Martian Gothic Unification, unfortunately. Professor Nate's just so depressed at this point. We this all game is like, I, I, don't, I can't imagine what you guys feel like sitting here watching us play this boring game. Like, yeah. it, it's not Oops. even exciting. It must be tough for like, you guys. Like, like I'm backtracking sorry. and doing the same thing over and over again. Hey, at least episodes. you guys aren't the ones actually playing the game. Hmm? Well, that's true. Don't play this game. Don't find this game. There's a reason you've never heard of this game Oops. before. Wait. Oops, wait, what? Where is the battery and didn't I... You never sent them up. Yeah, I did. No, I sent them up didn't. and then I saved in the corner here. Lying to yourself. Ugh. Telling yourself whatever you need to sleep at night. Unless I put it in the storage locker like an idiot. Oh no. Not Rod. <laughs> he never loses Does he still control. Have his inventory there? It's okay. Place it. So, I do know one thing we didn't interact with yet, and that is the electrical panel in the room with the escape pod. We couldn't open that. So I'm hoping that is where we can recharge this dead battery. I thought you were, we were going to use it in the tanning bed. We're also going to try that there. It's along the way towards it. It's a bit of a detour. It, that seems the most likely. Yeah, that wouldn't be surprised. But we can also we'll, we'll try both <laughs> options. How would a solar pan? I I don't know. Yeah. Don't ask too many true. questions about this game. <laughs> don't ask anything about this game. Why does the biosensor take up a slot on your inventory? Once you use it, it should just be. Can you drop the biosensor? We've never you can't, used it like, once. Drop anything? No, I mean, can you like drop it off in a tube somewhere and just leave it? We've never used it once. Yeah, I probably should do that. This is the one time we're gonna need it. <laughs> <laughs> I know, knowing this game. This next part is super important. You need the biosensor. <laughs> just die. They're so proper. They do wait. The zombies the zombies in this game are, are very chivalrous? Yes. That was the the exact word I was struggling to find. <laughs> uh that's a shortcut way. Yep. Did I just get that's a poison one, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's great. At least I have a ton of antitoxin with her. Get off of me. Go away. It looks really dark for some reason. Weren't they used? Didn't they used to be like purple? Yeah, the yeah. purple. Yeah, the purple. They ones. used to so be the bright purple ones. too. But now that like that one's like dark brown. Whoa! It's probably the it's glitching the, the same walls. thing. <laughs> like you've never glitched through the walls before. That's right. another thing. Order eighteen eighty six really glitches. This, right. this is the way to the bathroom. No, but see, for me, at the end of the day, it's how entertained, like. One of the big elements, one of the, the like the non-describable elements Open of what door. makes a game good is like how entertained you are by it. And this and Order eighteen eighty six have roughly entertained me about the same. Like there were great moments in Order eighteen eighty six, and there's been great moments in this. The difference was in Order eighteen eighty six, they were cinematically built to give you a specific response, whereas here it was watching Rod fail at the basic tasks of life. Oh yeah, fail. Yes, thank you. I would count. I would count getting. Murdered and falling into a pit of your own accord, <laughs> failing at the basic tasks of life, Rod. If there is a list for that category, well, this game doesn't really set up a precedent, or it gives you a great precedent. No, it does Visible barriers everywhere. Why else would, what, wouldn't I assume that that would just be? To safe? be fair, we just encountered an a invincible necromorph, not necromorph, invincible not necromorph, trimorph. <laughs> you know, trimorph. Um, sorry, EA. No, I don't apologize, EA. <laughs> Especially since EA <laughs> knew what they were ripping off. Can't budge you. And why bother me if I have to? Are you kidding me? You probably have to use it at the end of the... Yeah, most likely. This is the little one that stays behind mm -hmm. using this thing. That's who it is. That's exactly what it is. Someone has to hit that launch command. Uh, what am I going to do with this dead battery? Well, here we are, stuck again. We tried both things. Let's go back down to the necropolis and see what... Maybe there's a battery charger down there. We just didn't see. Is there anything I could just put away that... 
Cigarettes. Why do I have cigarettes? I don't think she needs a piccolo either. I'm just shoving this back to you, I think. <clears throat> Here, a uh, gun. A gun? Those are things that you use to shoot people. I love the laser accuracy at distance. And then the inability to hit something up close. That's really consistent. I like it. I don't know where the duct entrance is anymore. What duct entrance? Oh, yeah. How we got in there. Run! Run, <laughs> Natalia. Run. Okay. The only other thing I could think of we can interact with is the corpse in the med bit. <sighs> I thought I could get past him fast enough before that happened. Oh. And of course, just one shot, really. Of course. I wonder what the parameters are, like how it designates if you got a critical shot or whatever. Probably by the amount of BS you experience as a player. Well, then every damn shot yeah. you get would be critical. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it has to be relative to recent BS. Oh, okay, the hallway's to my right. Relative to recent BS. How do you uh, graph that? How do you make that a numerical equation that the computer can read? Oh, God. Get away. <laughs> Get away. If, if BS equals value greater than... One within the last yeah. ten minutes. Then, shot parameter set to increase critical chance by X percent, where X is the number of times you've fallen into a pit times 25. <laughs> In the pit. Yeah, he's a little friend's back up. I remember one of the parameters is broken for, like, Final Fantasy IX. Like, one of Steiner's attacks, it's only supposed to hit 5% of the time, but the equation's set up incorrectly in the game, and it hits 0% of the time. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> there's, uh, one in, there's one in Pokemon, too. I think it's Focus Energy. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the very the first generation of Pokemon those, games, those it's supposed to increase your critical hit chance, but it actually well, the body flips the integer because it's set on a 256 system. So it can increases it over, which sets it down to zero, which means you have a 0% chance for that critical hit. Show the battery <laughs> this guy. Who's the monkey, monkey wrench? wrench. Uh, and I'm pretty sure there's at least two or three games I've heard of, like... JRPGs or older RPGs where you could level your characters so high that they would literally okay. level to zero. I could just that flip back over. Have it flip over. Okay. Are we, are we stuck again? Yes, we are. Yay. Go back down to Necropolis. Yeah, I'm going to. Let me just put the stuff back in the back, too. For can, we, can we get to the fourth area in the Necropolis? No, he's blocking no, it. No, because he's blocking it. Right, he's so blocking let's the check area. that arena area again. Yeah. The one where it was like the Martian Council. That sounds pretty promising, that area. Yeah, why would it give you a red tag down there? We, we've been through all the doors. We were through all the doors yeah. hours ago. Yeah, we've been through... Like, what does it think you missed? Unless you need a power tag to you to power another one. Yeah, I mean, to drain the power from one But don't you already have that blue tag? Yeah, I had the blue tag the entire time, too. So there's no excuse. There is no excuse. Really? This is seriously It's not. Martian Gothic unification. It's just... <laughs> it is what it is. Alright, so... So, yeah. Try more blocking our way. Back to the arena. Let's see what else is in that little building area. See how much ammo we can waste on the way there. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. I'm running low. <laughs> what is this monkey wrench used for? Annoying. Run! Run! Oh. Oh, let me uh, reload first. Trying to, I'm trying to search all these bodies, too, so... I'm pretty sure you've gotten them all. Yeah. As far as I know, you've gotten everything from the bodies we need down here so far. Because you've checked. You've been pretty thorough in checking each body. We might have missed one. Ooh. 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 Please don't try. Uh -huh. Oh, that, that straight fooled me. I thought that was a texture on the ground. I thought that was a pit texture, but that is, in fact, just a rock texture. 
His face. <laughs> Are we supposed to relate? Oh, great! Poison head crabs down here. Are supposed to? Is it? Are these characters supposed to be relatable at all? You think? No, no. Because they try to give them backstory. They really do try. They do. Well, of all of them, Karn is the arguably the most fleshed out. Please glitch out. Nope, you're not that lucky. But as long as you just walk backwards and forward, he can yeah. never actually hit you. Oh, except until oh, there. Okay. okay, you're definitely poisoned now. No, he didn't hit me. He better not hit me. There's okay. Oh, nice, nice. Oh, nice. I saw that zombie. Going back in the chamber. Yeah, just watch me. <laughs> just watch. Just standing there at the end. Oh, okay. Our oh, friend you over there in there is alive. Oh, what is that? What is this? Um, yeah, oh, oh god! Generator. Use the battery. Yep, it is a generator. You're right. Monkey wrench to open up the side. Nice. Oh. Put that battery in there. Um. Oh wow, well, that didn't work. Go Does around maybe the other side. Generator, generator cable. Let me examine it first. Uh, with the battery. Mm. Turn the season directly on the battery. I don't think that'll work. Or the though. the monkey wrench. I get this off. There we go. Yeah. Yes. Progress. <laughs> you'll be Good job, Devin. I could have sworn <laughs> there was nothing on this side. All right, now open the hatch. Open small hatch, put in put battery. battery. Uh, yes. Uh, put the tag in, too, when you're done. An NN7 side hatch. Okay. Charge, Charge battery. battery. Let's put... Yeah. Green tag in there. Close it. Close it. Well, uh, I cannot examine yeah. it, so I don't know if it worked, but let's... let's we can assume mine. that it worked. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's use it. What does Palm Top Computer give Hopefully us? Hopefully it's not password protected. Oh, a portable save! A portable save, save point. Yeah, nice! nice. It only took 15 <clears throat> hours to get it. Oh, wow, we have a lot of new information. Let's see. Oh, good. Oh, great. Since discovering the necropolis and identifying shafts in its roof, we have been able to locate the apertures of a dozen of air filtration shafts on Mar the Martian surface. In principle, the filtration shafts bear some resemblance to our own recyc, although with some puzzling features. It's as though their engineering was organic. The oxygen levels here correspond to Earth's atmosphere at about 800 meters above sea level. The temperature here is warmer now than it would have been when the city was established, as many volcanic vents are comparatively recent. Concerning the size of the location, all we know for sure is that much of it has been blocked off by rock falls or buried in deep volcanic pits. I would guess that we are seeing a small fact fraction of the original city, unless we were extraordinarily lucky in the, the, the sighting, sighting of v Vita Base. There must be hundreds, maybe thousands, such subterranean cities on Mars. Ugh. Preliminary Note 1, Alfred Billington to Judith Haraway. The chamber we named the Regal Tomb is, in all probability, no such thing. Despite all our training, we archaeologists have shown a tendency to revert to ancient Egyptian concepts now that we are finally confronted with an alien civilization. If pushed to a provisional suggestion, I would say that the Regal Tomb is some form of, of nest, just as the subcavern we have named the Cathedral may be a form of psionic regenerator. Acoustics seem to be a fundamental part of the Karakarak's organic technology, but the hows and whys of it escape me. All is guesswork, I'm afraid. I'm not reading this. <laughs> <laughs> Why it came down here, I don't know. You got the or perhaps I do. Too, like, she was calling to me from her deep sleep. Queen Mab, who drives men mad, summoned me to her bedchamber. Like Haraway's clock, I am full of alarm. The bells! The bells! <laughs> Time to run, time to run. I will not call her sovereign. I will not bow sovereign. to the knee. Time to go. Must fly. Is this a Mass Effect now? <laughs> the Dead Space Mass Effect combo. EA, why are you why are you playing MG and ripping them off? You got you guys gotta stop. <laughs> it's gotten horrible. It's gotten worse the more farther we've gone through. Preliminary note two, Alfred Billington to Judith Haraway. I suspect that the so-called sarcophagus is in fact a form of cocoon. It is definitely organic, not manufactured. I believe that nothing in this necropolis is manufactured in the human sense of the term. It appears to be an impenetrable extrusion from whatever lies within it, like a clam in its shell. The function of the niche in its side is unknown, although Oba has speculated on the heart of stone found near the niche. 
Inserting the stone in the niche provides no significant results. Research continuing. And just a, a, an empty, blank, extra page. That's that's nice. Hmm. It's like when the printer prints an extra page for no reason. Hate that. And you only get, like, the number one. Yeah, the down the corner. <laughs> just <laughs> one. <laughs> ben Gunn, in a great hurry. I caught a glimpse of the membrane covering the sarcophagus. I know that no earthly fire or sword will penetrate that barrier, nor do I want the barrier breached and the hidden sleeper revealed. Let sleeping gods lie. So Ben Gunn went crazy before and changed his name and then used this laptop and then wrote a report on it. Is that and then he hid like, the laptop what? back down here. <laughs> and then took the battery out and then hid that in another locker because he's an asshole. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> so let's see what the chorus is. Oh, great. Another report. Report to Haraway from David Chang, the chorus in the central obelisk. The purpose of the alien artifact originally discovered by the base of the central obelisk remains a mystery. Darnley has suggested that it works on acoustic principle and has nicknamed it the chorus. It is likely there is a connection between the chorus and the central obelisk, but a complete explanation of the connection may never be achieved. Generally, we are left with a list of unanswered questions. Why does the chorus deliver an electric, electric shock when the immovable end is twisted? Why does the central obelisk emit a faint note when struck by a human being, but is silent when hit by an inanimate object? Evans has speculated that the obelisk was designed to produce a full musical note when struck by the much larger beings of ancient Mars. A note that was perhaps transmitted to the chorus if it already placed in its niche. Hold up. Don't we still have that uh, tuning fork? Or didn't we already use no, that? we used the tuning okay. fork. But here, we originally, or I originally posited that the Vulcanism. obelisk was used Yay. six letter again. I'm going to do Kepri. Um, yeah, try it. Um... I originally thought that the chorus was used with that obelisk, um, but maybe it's used with both. Maybe you charge it in the obelisk, and then you plug it into the side of Queen Mab's little sarcophagus and turn it on that way. No, okay, Erebus. Erebus? Yeah. <sighs> anybody, anybody else want to... Just ignore me, huh? Sorry, I'm busy putting letters in. And I stopped caring long ago, so... <laughs> Professor you could Nate's at least dead inside. <laughs> you could at least point. pretend. Professor I, I could, but that requires effort. Eh, no, it didn't work either. This is fun. Uh, <laughs> Vulcanism. I hate this game. Okay, but that so, gave us a lot of good. That gave us a lot of good information, though, because we know this works with the obelisk thingy. <laughs> Oh, I can't fall uh, into. I cannot fall into that vent. I, I actually tried. You, <laughs> amazing. you think the key card's charged now? I say so. Mm. There's really no way we could tell. Yeah, it charged That's the battery. The There's no. Reason. I mean, we can send it back up there and try. Speaking of which, I I wanted to say this too because I just thought of it. We definitely need to get Kenzo down here. Kenzo, why? Because Queen Mab is kept in a a psychic sarcophagus, and, and he's he the techno the Zen hippie. Yeah. It's like Master the killer. Vista zombie. Anything down? Borsta la Borsta. Besides the pump. Zombie. You only had. What? There was two red tags in here. One on his body and another one just in the room. Why? We don't need these red tags. Red and. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Let's place this in the tube. So we're going to have to get past this necromorph some trimorph somehow. Wait, 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 wait. Who's who's upstairs still? Matlock and Kenzo. They're both in the Everybody go this guy. go to Mood. Mood? Yeah, see if she has anything new now that we discovered this. Cuz she figures out new things every time we do. So we just figured out about the chorus, the computer, um and On the other thing. Say, oh, 12. I wish. <laughs> Unlimited power. Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll I talk to that movie last week. Because we have to go past Mood Chamber. Not for the first time. I saw it years ago when it came <laughs> out in theaters. But you saw it. You rewatched it again recently. Mm -hmm. That's what you're trying to say. In anticipation for the new Star Wars. All right. Which I also saw last week. <laughs> we all saw last week. Unfortunately. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> That's what I get for taking uh, Professor Nate on a nice date here to go see a movie. <laughs> no thanks. I'm an idiot. <laughs> what did you do? Oh, you I forgot to send it back to. 
I hate this game. <laughs> like, to be fair, it is all your fault. It is. <laughs> it is. I, I'm not gonna lie. He's um, not gonna lie. There. It's in the tubes. So, um, game by a design, by design perspective, you don't know what's in the tubes. And, and if you were working at this base, you didn't know what was sent up in the tubes. You would just see a flashing down button and just be like, hey, is this someone's well, mail? And just, just start picking <laughs> through it. But you would, I assume they would send things via communication channels. Because it looks true. like there's a lot of phones or communicators up on the main level. Or main, like, <laughs> communication pods. So it's like a trust thing. All right, no one else use the vacuum. Well, and maybe... I have to send this one thing up. These four things up. Well, maybe just maybe it, it is, too, that you can uh, pull up the vacuum and there's, like, a, a recorder or a communicator on the side of it. There could be a couple different ways they could have done that. Whoops. And he's holding that sayonara, isn't he? Yeah, that's why. Stumble. Stump. Stump. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that zombie was a trained dancer, man. He ain't gonna stumble. Yeah, at least I have a lot of health. Yeah. I was just used to Piccolo for now. I don't want to waste that Sinar. Such a good But yeah, game. go to Mood, and maybe Kenzo will have to go down there. I don't even... <laughs> How's he still alive? Oh my god! This guy. There we go. Finally. I might almost have ran out of ammo already. No, I'm down to 39 rounds. Okay. How is this even possible? Backtrack the game! Yay! <laughs> Back to the starting area. I'm very glad I opened up that shortcut. And did someone just... Did you guys see that headcrab zombie normal and then just die itself dark? I think yeah. I went to a shadow. I think it was still dark and was chasing me, but yeah, whatever. Yay, shortcuts. Yeah, I'm really interested. Like, uh, it's clear they designed the game with some backtracking or exploration. Some. Yeah, well, here's some. the thing. I think they designed it thinking about you as one character. Because if this was one uh, character who was having to do all this stuff, the backtracking would be relatively less. You could move the stuff around where you wanted it to be when you wanted it to be there. But the fact that most of the puzzles are Vulcanism. designed... There's evidence of volcanic activity under the base. But every study has shown that there's no volcanism on Mars. How do you explain that? Wow, she's actually explaining something to us. Mm-hmm. Not just giving us a lip. <laughs> really? Oh, wow. She actually gave us the password for it, too. Hammer, hammer time. Ooh. Wow. Like the one time so she's helpful. All right, is there anything else new? The war. I think we yes. asked. Okay. Yeah, we're good. That's, I guess we'll just unlock it right now. Hammer. Um, Hopefully it has a passcode, but I doubt it. But yeah, if they designed this around one character exploring through this base, but I think with the three characters and the three character puzzles, there's much more backtracking. Because, to be honest, half the time our problem has been that we didn't know what character needed to use what where. It's not a very efficient system. The game is not very efficient at all. Oops, there's two M's. What am I doing? Hammer. Progress hey. report. Indira said, according to the Naya Naja Kerensky, who would admit to being the most controversial geologist on Vita Base, the traces of active volcanism under the base in the general region of Olympus Mons possess the characteristics of an organically engineered system. Kerensky believes that the active volcano events of Eons Pass were adapted into a form of piped heating. The pit chamber is a particularly striking example of this organic engineering. The necropolis is powered by volcanism, when the, with the volcano's stupendous power harnessed and maintained by a number of checks and balances. If just a few of these regulatory mechanisms are disturbed, Naja reckons, the whole system could blow. Okay. So... Nowhere is this more evident than in the basalt plug no. in the fissure just below the rim of the vent in the pit chamber. I think the exact same thing Rob was thinking. <laughs> Continue, please. <laughs> An immense pressure of molten lava 
has built up behind the basalt barrier, so much that the plug is fractured. But the crack rack balancing mechanisms I think should Professor keep Nate is just laughing at my face. I'm sorry. It's just my expression when I just read that last se- section. It's 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 stupendous. It really is. Uh, yeah. Keep going, Professor Devin. I'm sorry. No, you're no, good. Wait, let me interrupt you again. Okay, now keep going. Okay. <laughs> so much so let me the interrupt pre- you again. Keep going. But the Karakrak balancing mechanism should keep the impending eruption at bay for maybe a million years more. Well, good thing they have a million years to get the plumber out there to, or the heating guy out there to fix it. However, Nadja is understandably nervous about the... Goddardamerum. Explosive (laughs) ship. Goddamn explosive. (laughs) There you go. Shipped in from Earth. They have the explosive potential to blast a hole clean through into hitherto inaccessible caverns. Inaccessible caverns. But they also have the capacity to shatter the basalt plug. According to Naja's guess. Keep going. <laughs> According to Naja's calculations, the British... <laughs> pressure of the released magma would result in a major eruption that would wipe out both the necropolis and Vita base. So, keep those explosives away from the pit chamber fissure or we'll blow ourselves sky high. God damn it. That, that was the most helpful note we've gotten this entire game. That's some uh, high quality Oops, humor for you. Person. Oh my god, this game. We need to, like, this game should have been the one that was, like, buried in a landfill, honestly. They should have put this one out and mentioned, no one should have mentioned the existence of this. If you want to play E.T. E.T., I'd rather, I would rather play E.T. right now, honestly. Compared to other Atari 2600 games, it's not an awful, terrible game. It's it's okay at best. This game sucks. (laughs) This isn't even really a game anymore. It's just... It's like an experiment to how long you can freaking play before you go insane by the sheer stupidity of this game. Apparently oh, great, I forgot. Oh, more zombies. Oh, my God. Get off, Kenzo, you freaks. Nice. Oh, I was hoping she'd grab you. <laughs> I was really hoping she wouldn't. Great, now they're just inching themselves closer and closer to that door until <laughs> until I reach that point where I literally cannot enter without getting instantly attacked. And that's great. Oh, that's hilarious. It is pretty great. I don't know about you. But I love it. Oh! I'm dead. dead. <laughs> oh, that's nice reaction time there. One hit. Okay, good. Well, that's all that matters. Die! The only HP that matters is the one... I don't know what you're talking about. All right, so it looks like we're going to have to end the one. this. This is where we're going to end the one, Between episode. one and zero. Oh, get out of here with your stupid puns. Right, like, we'll play, uh, <laughs> you play Dozens and Dragons, though. You're still alive at negative hit points. What? You become like a zombie? No, you're... No. Yeah. It depends on the severity of your injury. Hmm. Yeah. You could have negative five hit points. You're just very extremely injured. Let's move. I missed. What's been with your uh, Dungeons and Dragons kick today, Professor Nate? I don't know. I kind of missed the playing Witcher D&D. Kinda... Well, I think my D&D books are over there, though. I think I have them all in the basement. I was talking to a guy at work, um, and he's been he's been playing pretty consistently, but I stopped back at, like, 3... 3.0, 3.5. Well, 3.0 is probably my favorite. Yeah, I switched over to Pathfinders around 3.5 because they pretty much took the core mechanics of... 3.5 and I played I played a lot like I know we were able to play we had like a 3.5 dungeon master guide and monster manual but we had a 3.0 player's handbook and they they worked fine together yeah there's only a couple of discrepancies and I've you just work of, around it especially if you just use house rules it's not that bad I've heard a lot of people absolutely hated 4.0 yeah I don't know anybody who likes 4 and I hear a lot of people really like 5 like hmm. they're like if you want to start Should start with 5 it's the right way just check. Okay, yeah, I did. My bad. I'm going the wrong way. Yeah, this way. I never, I never, I never played four. I've also never played five either. 
Yeah, I haven't touched Wi-Fi. Uh, yeah, we're going to end it um, trying yeah. out the key here. This hallway, yeah. Oh, yeah. We I'm have trying to remember uh, which hallway. Yeah, we have to see if this... Oh, really, dude? <laughs> really? We have to see if this... You better hope it's charged, because if it's not... It's not! Uh, well, folks, you saw it here first. We're utterly incompetent and couldn't what? figure out how to charge a simple tag, but it's mostly Rod's fault. Oh. That's all that matters. <laughs> Don't forget to like, favorite, subscribe. We'll catch you back here next time on Pixelology 101.